Hello, my name is Obsidiman, and this is my comprehensive Interstellar Rift tutorial, the series with all the information needed to become an expert at the game. This video is part one of the ship designer tutorial, focusing on how to use each of the editor modes to make a simple, fully functional ship. To access the ship editor, press the ship editor button on the main menu, or find a ship construction terminal in-game and press design. Once in the editor, pressing escape or the button with the three lines in the top right will bring up a menu from where you can create a new blueprint, save the current blueprint, load an existing blueprint, or upload the current blueprint to the Steam Workshop. While working on a ship, you can press F5 to quickly save your progress. You can move the camera with W, A, S, and D and holding shift will move the camera quickly. Pressing C will recenter the camera. To orbit the camera, hold either left alt or the middle mouse button and move your mouse. Using the scroll wheel, you can zoom the camera in or out. To move your view up or down a floor of a ship, press the page up and page down buttons, or the small up and down arrows in the panel in the bottom left. You can also switch to fly camera mode with the button in the bottom left. Moving and rotating the fly camera uses the same controls as the orbit camera and you can move up and down with R and Q. The visibility of the UI can be toggled by pressing F. Ships in Interstellar Rift are structured on a tile grid, with each tile being approximately 2 by 2 by 2 meters. The yellow arrows in the editor indicate the forward direction of your ship. No matter which way the cockpit or engines of a ship are facing, this direction will always be forward. The visibility of the grid and the arrows can be toggled in the Grid Options menu at the top right along with the indicator showing a room above the current floor. At the top of the screen, you can see the resources needed to construct the current blueprint, with each resource outlined in the color of its tier. Below the resource cost, you'll find the stats of the current ship. The mass value shows the base mass of the ship without any cargo on board. The armor indicates the total amount of armor the ship has, both from armor generators and from exterior tiles on the ship. All ships have a base armor of 5,000. The shield value is determined by the shield generators installed on the ship. The maximum speed indicator shows how fast the ship can move without any cargo on board, and is calculated using the total engine thrust and the mass of the ship. The maximum turn rate also shows turn speed with no cargo on board, and is calculated using total thruster thrust and ship mass. A turning rate of 1 is considered to be standard for most ships. The last value is the energy required for the ship to sustain warp measured in power units per game tick, or 20th of a second. The value here once again assumes no cargo aboard the ship. Hovering over the number will show the cost assuming all the cargo space on the ship is filled with the heaviest cargo in the game. The formula to calculate warp cost for any ship is ship mass divided by 45. On the right side of the screen is a list of requirements to make a functional ship which haven't been met. Hovering over one of the items in the list will show devices which can be added to fill the requirement. Making sure these requirements are met is essential to make a functional ship. The first step in making a ship is laying out the ship's rooms with Room Edit Mode, accessed by pressing F1 or the Room Edit button in the bottom left, which is the default mode when you enter the editor. On the left side of the screen is a list of all the rooms on the ship. To add a new room, press the plus button at the bottom of the panel. And to remove a room, select it and press the minus button. To rename a room, select it and enter a name in the box at the top of the panel, then press enter. To add tiles to a room, make sure the room is selected and left click in the editor space on the grid tiles where you want the room to be. Clicking and dragging will let you create an area up to 11 by 11 tiles in size. To remove tiles from a room, right click the tile you want to get rid of, or right click and drag to remove an area up to 11 by 11. Placing new room tiles can overwrite existing room tiles from a different room. To select a room from the editor space, hover over it with your mouse and press the spacebar. By pressing page up and page down, you can shift your focus to a different floor, and expand rooms upward or downward, or make new rooms above and beneath other rooms. Rooms will always be enclosed on all sides with floors, walls, and ceilings. Once you have the rooms of your ship laid out, you can switch over to Prop Edit Mode with F2 or with the button in the bottom left. In Prop Edit Mode, the Prop Category menu and Prop Toolbar will appear. The colored tabs at the top of the Category menu will filter out devices that require materials of the corresponding tier. Hover over the toolbar to expand it to a panel of available props. 
In categories with lots of props, you can also scroll up to see more props. Bringing your cursor over a prop on the toolbar will show a panel with information about the prop, including the resource cost, prop description, and the mass of the prop. As of recording, some item descriptions don't match the actual functionality of the prop. A list of props with incorrect descriptions along with corrections can be found in the video description. Left-click on a prop from the toolbar to select it. Left-clicking in the editor space will place the selected prop at the location. Props can be rotated by pressing the left and right arrow keys, or by enabling mouse rotation. To rotate props with the mouse, hold down the left mouse button when placing, and move the mouse left or right. Multiple props can be placed in the same tile. Right-click on a prop in the editor space to remove it. If there is not enough space for a prop in a room, clicking won't place down the prop. You can toggle this by pressing K, or by clicking the Lock Room Creation button on the left side of the screen. The Move tool at the bottom left of the screen can be used to pick up and replace a prop in the editor space. Hovering your cursor over a prop in the editor space and pressing Tab will quickly select the prop type. The Floors category contains floor tiles that can be used to replace the default basic floor that rooms come with. Holding Shift while placing a prop will fill every available tile in the room with that prop. Doing this will only replace floors with the same floor type as the tile clicked, and the same goes for walls and ceilings. The Walls category contains wall tiles to replace the basic ones, just like the floors. It also has several prop walls, which can be placed anywhere in a room, unlike actual wall tiles which must be placed against the walls of a room. When placing props that go against room walls, like the wall tiles in this category, the prop will automatically orient itself against the edge of the grid tile according to where in the grid square your cursor is. When you select a prop that attaches to the ceiling of a room, you will enter Ceiling Mode, which shows a transparent view of all the ceiling tiles on the current floor of the ship. Doors must always be placed on walls that separate two adjacent rooms. If they are placed on a wall with no room on the other side, they will automatically create a new single tile room on the other side. The new room can be selected in Room Edit Mode and expanded like any other room. If you delete a room, any doors that lead into that room will also be removed. Windows can be placed on exterior facing walls. When placing a window, ghost tiles will appear around the window which must be clear of room tiles in order for the window to be placed. If the space indicated by the ghost tiles is filled with a room tile after a window is placed, the window will be removed. These ghost tiles will appear for all prompts which have an exterior component. Cockpits are required in order to pilot a ship. Like windows, they are placed on exterior facing walls and must have space around them clear of room tiles. Note that, as of recording, the warp formula given in the cockpit description is incorrect, the correct formula being ship mass divided by 45. The systems category has many different devices, ranging from teleporters to molecular assemblers to rift generators. Any functional prop which doesn't fit in one of the other specific categories will be found in the Systems category. Make sure that the device's screen, shown in the editor with a blue hologram, is accessible when placing functional props. Stairs can be used to go up or down floors in a ship. They are placed with the base of the staircase at ground level on the currently selected floor. The Walkways category has props that can be used to create mid-air platforms to walk on. These props are different from floor tiles, since floor tiles must be placed on the floors of rooms, while walkway props can be placed in the air. This category also has hand railings and girder prop walls to make staircases and catwalks safer. In the Life Support category, you can find the Life Support Machine, different styles of vents, and the Thermal Extractor. The Life Support Machine itself is technically a wall tile, and so must be placed against the wall of a room. Likewise, different style events must be placed on surfaces according to what type of tile they are. The Weapons category not only has different types of ship-based weapons, but also defensive devices, like the armor and shield generators. Devices from this category require weapon CPU points in order to function. Ships have a base value of 125 weapon CPU points, and the CPU providers in this category can expand that according to their tier. Weapon CPU will be covered further in the Advanced Ship Editing video next week. The Power category has everything related to power storage and generation. Hydrogen fuel tanks are found here, as well as generators, power batteries, and power cells. Batteries store a large amount of power which is drained over time, for example by the ship's warp drive. Power cells store a relatively small amount of power, but can discharge it instantly, which is useful for devices like teleporters. 
The cargo category has cargo pads and cargo containers, as well as the different types of lockers and weapon racks. The cargo teleporter can also be found here, and a device called an automatic cargo transfer relay, or ACTOR for short. Actors can move cargo around within a ship, and are a vital part of ship automation, which will be covered in depth in a future video. The resources category has devices used to collect, process, and manufacture the different resources and tools in the game. In the furniture category, you can find all the different types of lights you can add to illuminate the interiors of your ship. To switch the lighting mode and see what the ship will actually look like in-game, press L or the light bulb button in the bottom left. This category also has many different decorative props like seats, plants, and signs. The pillars category, similar to furniture, has many decorative pillar props. The small pillars fit seamlessly with the railing props found in the walkways category. If you get tired of the default colors of the ship, you can switch to paint mode to get a fresh coat of paint. You can choose from one of 27 color palettes to paint with, and with the color palette selected, left click on a prop to paint it. If you hold shift when you click, all of the props of the same type in the room will be painted as well. You can also pick out a color palette before building, and all of the props you place will be painted with the selected palette. To switch to exterior edit mode, click the exterior mode button in the bottom left, or press F3. Basic exterior tiles will be automatically generated around the rooms placed in room edit mode. These default tiles cannot be removed. You can turn on symmetry mode by pressing the symmetry button on the left side of the screen. Any of the three planes can be selected as a symmetry plane, but only one at a time. If the plane is not centered where you want it, you can press the nudge buttons to put it in the correct spot. Exterior blocks can be rotated around two axes using the arrow keys or mouse rotation. Four of the categories in exterior mode are different sizes of building blocks. There are 1x1x1 blocks, 2x1x1 blocks, 2x2x1 blocks, and 2x2x2 blocks. These blocks come in many different shapes, allowing custom and creative ship design. The industrial category has blocks that fit with a more industrial theme, like girder squares and piping blocks. This category also has many different colored strobe lights. In the weapons category are many ship-mounted weapons to choose from. There is also an electromagnetic pulse generator, which is used to defend against enemy missiles and torpedoes. The EMP can be activated by pressing N in the cockpit. The power category has different sized solar panels, which will generate a very small amount of power for free, which is useful to make things like doors and life support systems function on a ship even without fuel. There are also two sizes of sensor arrays in this category, which let the ship scan asteroids for ores and track down signals in space. The engines and thrusters category has propulsion devices for moving your ship. The different sizes of exterior mounted engines provide movement speed for your ship. There are also much larger engines that are mounted from the interior of the ship under the Systems tab. Maneuvering thrusters provide turning speed for your ship. The direction that thrusters and engines are placed doesn't matter for mobility, only the amount added. Just like with the interior, Paint Mode and Exterior Edit Mode allows you to color individual blocks with a variety of different colors. Holding Shift while clicking will also paint all similar blocks with a selected color. Now that this ship is functional and decorated, it's ready to be saved and built in-game. If you'd like to try this ship out for yourself, there will be a Steam Workshop link to it in the video description. That covers all of the basics for building ships in Interstellar Rift. The next video will be focusing on the more advanced aspects of the ship editor, like power and weapon groups, and how to upload your favorite creations to the Steam Workshop for everyone to appreciate. If there are any topics you'd like to see covered in a future video, leave your suggestion in a comment below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to catch the rest of the series.